Welcome to the Lestrange Lair. Today we're reviewing Noble Collection's Magical Creatures. So if you enjoy creatures as a concept, but you're afraid to have them in your home or around your person for fear they will eat you, soil you, or terrify you, then you can buy these little figurines from Noble Collections. They usually run at $29 each. You can get them on the Noble Collections site, or if you have Amazon Prime, you can get them there. No one's paying me for this advertisement, Roddy. I'm so sad. We have so much gold, oh darling. I know, it doesn't really matter. So, when you get a figurine, they're all quite similar on the outside. As in, they all come in these little plastic boxes that you're not going to keep because they look very flimsy, but they're packaged in them anyway. And then, behold, you get a case. They all look very similar, like this. That's in a, a case. It's all empty except for packaging. I'm building up. It's a build up. But all the cases look pretty much the same. You can keep them in a cute little clear display case or you can take them out and play ball with them like we do. Actually, we just play with them. Levitate them like a snitch. Yes, they're actually vinyl, so they're like they could be toys too, but this channel is not child friendly, so I am not doing a toy review. And each one comes with this cute little ad book from Noble Collections that shows their items. It could be Harry Potter related, it could be Game of Thrones related, Lord of the Rings, whatever Noble Collections sells, they're sending you a little booklet to see what it is. So that comes with everything. Again, all the cases are the same. And when you get an item, like this actually came from Aragog the spider. He's in like this plastic case, but it's only encased partially. It's tied down with this lovely little tie that you have to untie. It's only mildly annoying. You could always cut it. So that's how that works. And we've taken a lot of them out of the cases, but we have one in the case because this is the one I actually like to keep inside the case. Because, think about it, it's like Magical Creatures class when it was in an aquarium, this beautiful Grendelo. Isn't he charming? Him is. We have several figures to show you, but I wanted to start with one in the case because it's in the case and it looks like it does when it's bought and comes out. So this is like you pretending that we're having an unboxing. Have an imagination, muggle. So, when you want to open it, you just pull it. I don't really like the way they stay on the bases. It's kind of hard to take them off and put them back properly. So we leave them off, except Grendelow comes in and out. Now, the most dull base I got that was just the plain bottom was for the Mandrake, but he already had his pot. This is a really neat base because you have the plant life and whatnot, and then the Grindelow inside. Isn't he lovely, Rodolphus? He is like the best of pets if we had pets. I know. If we remember to feed them, I would love to have one of these. But this is why we have the figurine instead, as I said, because you don't have to feed them. But this is all the neat sea life and whatnot that comes as part of his diorama. Is diorama the right word? I think it is. I like it. So then he has his little horns in the back. He has all his tentacles. There's this bigger looking tentacle here that fits in a niche in the bottom of his little diorama and it sort of kind of stays. I mean, it's not really the greatest to put back on the base, but you can make it happen. And it looks like he's waving, doesn't it? He's like, hey. He knows us, he greets us. He does, he's adorable. So that's him and I'm going to put him back and it's not going to be very smooth and it's not really because I'm incompetent because I'm Bellatrix, I'm never incompetent. It's because these are annoying to actually put back and they're supposed to be to kind of take out and play with and everything but again it's harder so the others are just out they're roaming free we do not keep their cases but he just looks like he's in his little aquarium say bye bye to the grandelow before we move on bye grandelow goodbye Rudolphus. i don't do a good grandelow voice i'm sorry it's very charming oh darling next another one of my favorites well they're all my favorites really this is mandrake in his pot He's so adorable. Okay, so this is the pot. It's a pot. I know you've seen one before, but here it is again. Just a pot. Not even any soil in there, really. Just a, something in the bottom that's like another plant fleck or something, but it's made onto it. And this is also PVC. It's got a nice weight to it, the pot. And here's our adorable, angry little mandrake. Isn't he the cutest? 
Him is. Here's him from the back, all his beautiful leaves. Now, he and the Grindelo and the Aragog, which I'll show you soon, came with tape on their extremities like this. I left this on to show you. I don't know what the point is, but it's just like all of the, the Grindelo's legs and Aragog's legs had this. And the Mandrake's leaves, it's like this weird tape that you have to take off. And, and they're not like thin leaves. It's not going to need supporting. But look, they're covered in tape. Don't know why. So I left that just to kind of demonstrate. And I'm going to put it in the pot now until this review is over. So now it's got trash in it. I'm sorry, Mandrake darling. Am I really sorry? No, I'm not. I'm never sorry. Oh, well, there's more tape. See, it's on every leaf, but I took some of it off earlier because I was like, why is there tape on the leaves? And I thought, well, if I want to do a thorough review for the muggles and wizardlings, I should leave some of it on and show them. Tape. Lovely. Strange. Isn't it strange? So he looks all angry, which we really love. Look at that angry. It's lovely. And his hands look kind of like, well, they're plants, but they remind me of claws a little. Grumpy little mandrake. And then his bottom is just like, looks like little feet, but it's obviously like plant roots. Isn't he lovely? The worthiest lesson in herbology we ever took. Oh, herbology. We learn so many ways to hurt people in herbology. Yes, things growing through their body. It's just so striking. So many nasty little plants out there with which to utilize in dark magic. Speaking of dark magic, Adagog. He also had a case, as you saw in the beginning with the little plastic thing in there that used to be on his bum. And let's start with his base. It has two parts. I don't know why they didn't just make it one, but it's two, so it's also very annoying when you want to do anything with it. But this part has the baby spiders and whatnot and then this also has the baby spiders and it has a little stand base like niche that's supposed to go in him to hold him steady and again just like with the mandrake it somewhat does but eh we wanted to take him out so he's fine he's just roaming free he's a free range spider we aren't going to leave him in a cage and this guy would be great for a halloween decoration as well just putting it out there because he's a very nice spider. I like the way he stands on his tippy toes where a lot of the Halloween decor spiders are more flattened out with their legs like this. And he's like up and I like that. And this is his back. Very detailed, lifelike spider. A nice big hairy, hairy scatty spider. Do you want to eat a Hagrid? Yes, you do. That's how you Imperial a spider. Very cool. Again, PVC. This one's lightweight. The bases are heavier, generally, than the actual figures. So, you could think it's kind of expensive for PVC, but it's a really good replica. And it's unique. And my favorite one probably is coming up next. We love gold, so of course the goblin is my favorite. And he could also be kind of cute for Halloween, because Halloween goblins specifically are not prevalent in decor for some reason. Even though you hear about ghosties, ghoulies, and goblins, you don't see a lot of goblins. But this guy could be a Halloween decoration. Now, he's sitting at his desk in the bank, and there's all these beautiful bags of gold at his feet. And he was just in the case like that. So you know what the case looks like already. If not, go back to the beginning of the video and look at the case with the Grindelow because they all look the same. So this is him. He has his ledger book open here. He's studiously writing, except he was writing. This is his feather quill. It was not made on very well. I took it out. We got it around Christmas, and I was just holding it in my hand on Christmas Eve and fiddling with it at a party, and I'm very gentle with things. I wasn't wiggling the quill or doing anything untoward with it. I didn't torture it. I didn't hurt it. I know you don't believe me because I'm me, but it's true. And it just got wiggly and snapped off for no reason. Like, I really wasn't touching it that much. So I'm very careful with my things. They're all in good condition. This quill was just really not put on well, is my point. As a review product, be very careful with the Goblin's quill. But it's a cute feather quill. Nice touch. He no longer has it because I'm sure I'll lose it after this. I held on to it just for all of you. Now, you can take him out. And then he's just got his desk. And you can see his little legs right here. 
So the point of taking him out is you can see his little legs. I wish they had made it where you could take him away from the whole desk. But then I guess his arms would have to move because he would look strange just standing there like this. So those are all the creatures that we have in our collection. We hope you enjoyed. Until next time. Kusio. <laughs>